Here we go. This thing is uh, not slow and I'm loving it in here. My enthusiasm is because it is epic. It makes me froth over it, seriously. And if you get it in this, what I would call a sex spec, then I respect you very much. This is just epic. Alrighty guys, this is very, very exciting. Behind me is the ID Buzz Pro. Pricing and specs have finally been announced for Australia. So I am here in beautiful Germany to review this absolutely epic looking minivan. I can't believe I'm saying that. I love minivans. So it's going to be very exciting because this thing is pretty crazy in every way. It's got a good drivetrain. It's got a very funky interior. Oh, so many quirks and features. Doug DeMuro would have a fit. So today I'm going to take you for a full exterior tour of the ID Buzz. This one here is the pro long wheelbase. We're gonna check out its really wild and wacky interior. Of course, it's practicality. Then we're gonna switch over into the ID Buzz Pro GTX, which is the high performance ID Buzz. Just doesn't look as cool as this, to be honest, especially on the inside, but it is really fast, especially in a straight line. And of course, we can give this thing lots of source as well. And of course, I'll end on my final thoughts. Should you be lining up to buy the new ID Buzz? Let's get into it. Ooh. Alrighty guys, let's start by talking about price because cheeky Volkswagen, they've come in under the luxury car tax, which is actually a very important thing because it saves you something like 30% on the price. So the cargo will set you back $79,990. That is of course a stripped down version of this purely for you cargo lovers out there. Then there is the ID Buzz Pro, which is the passenger variant. That starts with the short wheel base, which is $87,990 and therefore comes in under luxury car tax. So you're not paying much more on the road. That is a five seater, but if you go for the long wheel base that will set you back 91 to 90 and for that you get seven seats and uh well you get this bad boy which is what we have here but there is a gtx which is the high performance variant of the id buzz which is crazy to say and that will set you back 109,990 before on road costs so actually across the board it's relatively well priced especially when you have a look at something like a top of the range kia ev9 that will set you back well quite a lot more and you're getting this so let's talk about the way that it looks because I absolutely love it. You got these really cool LED headlights here. This is IQ light. So it's matrix LED headlights. Means it blanks out part of its beam for oncoming traffic and just a really cool design with nice daytime running lights. You have the giant VW badge that's reminiscent of a combi van because as you could tell, this is very much styled like that. You could tell with the dual tone paint here. I love this yellowy green with a huge grill. It is different on the GTX if you go for that and a bit more sporty, but I wouldn't have it any other way than this. It's got a front stubby nose and I love it for it. And by the way, if you're wondering what's under that, is there any storage under? Well, take a look. It's got a rather violent fall to it. And then unfortunately there's nothing. You could fill up your washer fluid. Let's check out the side. So if you're wondering about the length, if you go for the short wheel base, it's 4,712 millimeters long. And if you go for the long wheel base, it's 4,962 millimeters. So it's exactly 250 millimeters longer, but thankfully it doesn't quite go over five meters because otherwise this thing would just be even bigger than it already is. Let's talk about these wheels here. I love them. These are 20 inch wheels. They've got that really cool retro design to them. They're wrapped in some good tires as well. Continental Eco Contact 6 tires, which you would expect suck, but actually they don't. And I say that because Eco tires, they don't have much rolling resistance, as you can imagine why. Coming to the rest of the side, you got this blacked out mirror cap with a 360 camera. You got the world's largest door love minivans. You got very tinted privacy glass and yes this window opens up which is nice you'll see that soon and otherwise it's a long boy. This is your recharge cap here as well. Now interestingly you might be like Matt isn't the door gonna hit? Well that's what I thought. It comes really really close like really close but here you're gonna find your charging outlet. So let's quickly talk about the battery stuff. So if you go for the short wheel base you get a 79 kilowatt hour battery slightly smaller. AC charging is 11 kilowatt and DC fast charging is 185 kilowatt max. But if you go for the long wheelbase, you get a bigger boy battery. That's 86 kilowatt hours. And that charges at a max rate of 200 kilowatts. So slightly faster. 
faster charging as well as a bigger batteries for slightly better range too. We don't actually know what the WLTP is yet. They're still finalizing that before it comes to Australia early next year. However, I can tell you the efficiency I have been getting. So for this long wheel base, which is rear wheel drive only, I've been getting 20.4 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, which is actually pretty good. And that means you're gonna be getting close to about 380 kilometers or so of range. And then the GTX, it only has slightly higher consumption, 21.4 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. And that means that you're gonna be getting very, very similar amounts of range. In fact, the computers of these have been saying about 400 kilometers, which for such a large vehicle, it's actually quite impressive. Okay, let's talk about the bum. Alrighty, let's talk about the bum because it's actually quite grown up and I do like it. So you got this huge LED light bar here at the back. IQ light again. I don't think these are matrix LED though. I love the white and black Volkswagen badge here and ID Buzz is in white font there too. Really small attention to detail, but it makes me froth over it, seriously. You have the dual tone paint, which again looks fantastic, but you can go more subtle if you want, like the dual tone paint on the GTX. And otherwise it's a really big minivan. I mean, what do you expect? Alrighty, let's talk about practicality now. It wouldn't be a minivan if it didn't have a lot of it. And um, it does have a lot of it, but with a small caveat. So with all three rows up, you get 304 liters of boot space. And you can see that there is a bit of a shelf because you have these little storage areas below. One's for your charging cables, the other is for rubbish apparently. Here in Europe, you get the funny little tow hook. You press that, it's excited to see you. And then yeah, lock it up into place, but that is not going to be passing our Australian design rules. So goodbye. And then of course you could drop the second row, you get 1360 liters of boot space. And then if you drop the second row, well, suddenly you're a ute and you have so much goddamn room. It's not the most amount of room for a minivan. You would find more room in a lot of other minivans simply because they don't have a giant battery living under the floor, but it is of course still really quite impressive. And with a gross payload of about 3,300 kilograms, you carry quite a lot of weight in this thing before you uh, tip it over. <laughs> All right. Let's check out the interior. Alrighty guys, let's talk about the interior now of the ID Buzz because frankly, it is insane. I love it. We have it in this really cool like yellowy spec and it just feels, I don't know, it feels as good as it looks. So we have this really nice leather steering wheel with touch capacitive buttons. I've never really loved those, but it seems to be working here fine. You can also see a little bit on the display in front of you, though it really isn't very much. Not that you really need to see it very much. Here we have a giant display and it is super responsive, super duper snappy. We have wide wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto. And so technology within here is actually just really, really good storage space. Now, I could probably go on about this for literal years because there is so much storage. But you have a little center box here with a couple of cup holders and some more storage if you want it. Huge amount of storage here, but a huge glove box as well. The center armrest, well, what center armrest? You get this little center storage area, which comes with a little, I don't know, ashtray looking thing. But you can also just completely remove this if you want to and uh, put it somewhere else. It's got more storage too. So here, you can pull that out. You've got like a drawer and then at the front as well, you can do the same. So yes, it's really, really impressive. And if you want to keep it out, you can, I guess, but it's also super easy just to plop back in. You're going to notice as well on both sides of the seat, you get armrests that you can adjust to your heart's content. Actually, let's talk about these seats because they're amazing. So obviously ID seats covered in this yellow as well. You have extendable leg rests. You have automatic adjustment in pretty much every way. There are also massage seats too, so very, very comfortable. We've now driven these things for hundreds of kilometers, um, and I'm genuinely surprised that this three-ton barge is as comfortable as it is. Uh, sorry, more storage. So you've got a wireless phone charger here, two USB-C ports. You've also got some storage here in the door and down here in the door as well. And then there's just the design, right? So if you really go looking for it, you'll find it. You've got scratchy materials a lot of places. You've got this very faux wood up here on the dash. It literally looks quite pixelated, but feel a it's just a really nice design and uh, I'm absolutely loving it. Even down to things like the pedals, you have a play button for your accelerator and a pause for the brake. Just a funny little touch. And we have this really cool like electrochromatic roof or something like that. You just slide your finger and using a bit of electricity, it excites the particles and can cover it or you can completely make it clear as well. Just really cool touches and I'm loving it in here. My enthusiasm is because it is epic. Really cool. Let's check out the back seats. Okay, so getting in obviously, 
see we have these automatic doors here. Now this is the seven seater variant. You can get this as a five seater as well. We'll close this by pressing the button here because it's become weirdly cold here in Germany, despite it being literally summer. So as you can see, I have loads of leg room. Toe room is no issue as well, despite the pretty large battery living under the floor and headroom too is cavernous. There is so much space in here. You get cool things like a tray table there that you press this and you can adjust it to hold wherever you like. It's just cool if you want to type on it or eat something as someone clearly has. Um, you have a little map pocket up here or phone pocket and then a map pocket down there. Like I said, it is cavernous back here. You get the same leather and cloth seats. Really, really cool design as well. And quad zone climate control, which you can control from up here when the car is not off like it is now. So I should mention that there's also a bunch of other stuff here as well. So you have heated outboard seats, your Harman Kardon branded sound system, which does actually sound really, really good. You have nice soft touch here. That's of course all scratchy. You can open the window by pulling this lever here and you've got more storage, including another USB-C port and a huge amount of storage down here as well. So yeah, you're not gonna be wanting for storage, I'll put it that way. Let's check out the back seats. Okay, so a couple of really cool features. First of all, you can just slide these around to your heart's content. I'm pretty sure you can fully remove them as well using this little reg toggle down there if you want to, but to get in, super easy. You just push it like that. There is loads of room. You're never gonna have an issue. Now, I'm five foot 11. Let's put the seats all the way back. I've got so much leg room. Headroom as well is really, really good. Toe room as well is fantastic. This is all nice and soft. You have more storage up here on the door cards. Then you've got some cool little Easter eggs here like the ID buzzer van there. You've got a storage pocket down there and a USB-C port. That's pretty cool. And again, the seats back here are very, very nice. Yes, yeah, so very, very impressive. And thankfully you do get air vents in all three rows too. So really impressed with this interior. And I think you'll be even more impressed by carsource.com forward slash buy our car buying service where we have a dedicated team who are out there to get you the best deals on your next car. We have thousands of dealers who we literally make fight each other to get you the best deal possible with cars actually in stock. And best of all, because we charge a fixed fee to the dealer, it's totally free for you. So if that sounds good to you and you want to buy yourself any Volkswagen product or any new car, make sure you check out carsource.com forward slash buy, especially when this thing launches next year. Alrighty. Let's launch it. Okay guys, now we are going to launch the ID Buzz. So to do so, we put the car into ESC Sport. We are in a very quiet, nice, no one's around, it's always good. We're gonna put the car into drive and then we are just going to brake boost it. I have my specialist timing gear here with me in Germany. Let's go, fist me. Here we go. Gentle. Oh, and then it really picks up. <laughs> Okay, what did we get? And we got 0 to 100 in 6.37 seconds. They actually claim a 0 to 100 of 6.4 seconds, so it slightly beats what they claim. Alrighty, let's drive this thing normally. Alrighty guys, we're driving the GTX. Let's put the car into sport mode and uh, give it some source. Here we go. <sighs> This thing is uh, not slow. So like I said, it comes in two tunes. You have the regular ID buzz, whether you get the short wheelbase or long wheelbase, it doesn't matter. You get a single rear motor that's actually been updated and that's what we're gonna get for Australia. 210 kilowatt of power, 550 newton meters of torque. And it's pretty quick. Zero 100 is somewhere around 7.2 seconds or so. But then you have the GTX, which adds an electric motor to the front axle. It's still rear wheel drive bias, but now it puts out about 250 kilowatt of power and a combined figure of about 769 newton meters of torque. You put your foot down and it's like an instant torque. It really throws you right back in the seat. Look, is it necessary? No, but I kind of love it. It's just quite fast. When you put it into sport mode though, you might think it might have adaptive dampers, but it does not. They are fixed dampers. And I thought that that would be a real issue if I'm being totally honest with you, but it hasn't been at all. We're on a nice German road. They all seem to be pretty nice to be honest. And so everything is quite nice and soft. It's probably ideal conditions, but we'll go on to a more strong Australian road in a moment and you'll see what I mean. But even if we turn a corner like here at pace, this thing really does uh, shift and handle quite well. Yes, there is definitely body roll. You cannot escape the 2,700 kilogram curb weight of this thing. The braking is where you really feel the shift of mass, but it's a weird amount of fun for a minivan, right? You just don't expect it. And it really does have plenty of performance underfoot. And then the other thing for me is when you really think about it, this thing is substantially cheaper than an equivalent Kia EV. Also check out this turning circle. It's actually quite good. You could really get the wheels. I just did a full like 360 in such a small spot.
God, this thing is fast. All right, we've just hit our Australian style road, i.e. not very good. And here are my thoughts. So it definitely has an underlying firmness, especially on the GTX riding on pretty big wheels and quite thin tires. But actually, it's fine. I would say this is actually rather compliant overall, especially when you consider this thing's heft 2.7 tons. She ain't light. It went over that pothole awesomely. So it's doing a good job. When you put it at the equivalent like price to price, for example, of the EV9 GT line, like, uh, I'm sorry, I'm just having a better time in this. I think that that's probably more comfortable overall, but this is just epic. It really does handle phenomenally well. And with that, let's get into our final thoughts. Alrighty guys, final thoughts on the ID Buzz Pro. What do I think? Well, honestly, I think it's price right. I think it looks incredible. I think the interior is awesome and it drives really remarkably well. This thing is an absolute winner in my eyes. It just gets everything right and nothing really wrong. I, like I'm trying to fault it, I literally cannot. And if you get it in this, what I would call a sex spec, then I respect you very much. And I would also respect you more if you buy your next car through castles.com forward slash buy, like I said, we have a team of dedicated car buyers who are literally on your side, zero cost for you. It's a, it's a no brainer. And if you did enjoy this video, please do like, subscribe, comment, you know, all of that. Ciao for now.